In this episode of Restore It, I'm going to show you the results and some of the work that's been carried out on the Mercedes since we last saw it on the channel. As a quick reminder of the last episode played in the background, I want to quickly talk about what happened with this project. This was my first time organising something like this for someone else, and so I made the mistake of agreeing on a price before really having a good look at the car. I know, I've learnt the hard way. The customer stated that there were four spots of rust that needed to be sorted, along with a few other things. We came to an agreement, and away I went. Once the car was stripped, and I started poking around a bit, I obviously found more than just four spots of rust. In total, I found 17 separate spots that needed at least one patch replacing, and some of the worst spots needing several complicated parts that would be made from scratch. This kind of scuppered my plans and schedule for running a YouTube channel at the same time, due to the sheer amount of work involved on the welding alone. It also didn't fare well in terms of content. I'm not the best welder, it's nothing to write home about, and I'm still very much learning the ropes, and so filming in the detail that I'm used to, whilst making mistake after mistake, and taking so much longer than a pro would, I didn't get that much footage out of it. The camera would die, the SD cards would fill up, and it ended up being a bit of a mess that consisted of not much at all. It's all been a bit of a nightmare to say the least. I do however have something to show you. I have two spots that I worked on that were mostly filmed, as well as a lot of photos of before, during and after the welding and I'll show you those towards the end of the episode. What you're seeing right now is me trying to make a piece for the front of the rear left arch. I restarted this piece about five times before I was even slightly happy with it. My method was kind of trial and error instead of experience and knowledge based. The good thing about this Mercedes for me is that it's covered in about 3 or 4 mils of filler over most of the body. So if something isn't perfect, it can and will be covered up by that filler. After making the piece I needed, I offered it up to the car and drew around it to get the cutting line and then made the cut. 
In this case I decided to cut it just a little bit smaller as I was going to lap weld some of it. I'd say the hardest part of welding a car like this is the decision making. Welding is a skill that can be learned quite quickly, and with a grinder you can cover up a lot of your mistakes. The same goes for making up pieces and cutting out rust. They're easy enough. I think the experience to make the right decision can only come with time. I found myself just staring at the task in hand for way longer than I probably should have done, and I think the more practice I get, the less time it will take for me to make the right decision. Here's a great example of where I was so focused on the job in hand, I totally neglected the fact I was making a video. You can just see the start of me making the template for the piece that makes up the inner arch. I made another smaller version of the piece I made for the outer section and welded that in before tacking the outer one over it. We pick it back up just as I get my first tack onto the outer piece, which was welded in with a mix of butt and lap welds. This isn't the end of the work on this section, I just wanted to protect it with primer so it didn't flash rust. I will be coming back to this for a bit more welding and perfecting before it gets filled. Here are some of the photos that show a few different angles. The next spot of rust I found as I was poking around underneath the car. Before we do that, I just have a very quick word from the sponsor of this episode. The Walking Dead Survivors is an official strategy game based on the Skybound's Walking Dead comic series. Join the most active Walking Dead community and experience its world by crossing paths with iconic comic book characters like Rick, Michonne and Negan. Battle hordes of walkers and fight the living in your fan favourite locations. This is your chance to explore the vast universe that is The Walking Dead. And if you don't want to go it alone, team up with other players to form clans and build various clan buildings across the region to gain more territories and go to war against Negan. Tasks are vital to maintaining your shelter and crucial for survival. Gather supplies, farm, train, explore, fight, recruit new heroes and tend to your group's medical needs to get to the top. And to help with the fight, the Walking Dead survivors are giving you 20 US dollars worth of in-game rewards just for trying it out. So click the link in the description below to download the game and use code TWD Survivors to receive those juicy in-game rewards. A big thanks to the Walking Dead survivors for the sponsor, let's get back to it. So moving on to the next spot, which was a bit more straightforward, but annoyingly directly underneath the seatbelt mounting bracket. After removing some undersill, I used the big rotary tool to remove the rust to get a better look at what needed to be cut out.
After removing the rust and making the pieces that I needed, I made the cuts. I had to be very careful not to cut through to that seatbelt bracket, so I spent an age going through very slowly. So there was a lack of filming during this one as well, but this is after the lower patch has been welded in and the top one finished and painted inside. You can just about see the outline of the bigger patch in these shots, and I also have some more photos with a few different angles. As you guys know this isn't really my style, but it had to be done as the car has a deadline and the unexpected amount of work just made it impossible to do what I normally do. So as for the rest of it, I have some video at the end, but it's mostly photos, which I'm about to show you now. This section was just slightly further forward than the last, and needed pretty much the same treatment. The rear of the rear left arch and battery tray had major work that I didn't catch much of as I had a friend helping me out. So much work went into this right rear section, these photos don't really do it any justice, but here they are anyway. Moving on to the front left, I think I managed to get photos of pretty much all of it. What I found strange was that this side, the side closer to the kerb, was actually much better off compared to the other one, when if you think about it, all of the dirt, the puddles, the snow etc that gathers on the left hand side, you'd think this would be the worst one. This front left section took me two working days in total to finish. Off the back of all this welding on the Mercedes, I'm excited to start working on E30s again as I'll be able to take as long as I like, within reason, to get the welding done whilst filming it in great detail, showing you all of the mistakes and corrections along the way.
so the last of the welding on this car lies within the front and back windscreens. I'm not really looking forward to it, but I will do my best to film the whole process and bring you one more episode of welding before the bodywork and painting is done. Thanks for watching this patchwork of an episode, I'll see you next time.